What is up guys, Coach Show. In this video, I'm gonna teach you everything you need to know about circus dumbbells. So let's get right to it. What is up guys, Kosho here at the Lions End, located in Colmar, PA. If you already didn't know, I am the current heavyweight national strongman champion. And in this video, we're gonna be covering the circus dumbbell. So what we wanna cover is basically what it is, how to clean and press it, common mistakes, and then the gear I would recommend you to use if you are doing the circus dumbbell for a competition or in your training. But before we get into that, make sure if you haven't already, like the video, subscribe to the channel, tons of strongman content coming your way in the future. So if you're involved with the sport, you're gonna wanna make sure that you are subscribed to this channel. It's called the circus dumbbell because if you drop this thing on your head, you're gonna look like a clown. Ha, just kidding. So what you're looking at right here, guys, are a couple different circus dumbbells from different uh, manufacturers, uh, but this is kind of what the standard look is gonna be like. So we have an eight inch circus dumbbell that typically starts at 45 pounds. We have a 10 inch circus dumbbell, which is at 85 pounds. And then we have a 12 inch, which is gonna be right around 110 pounds empty. They're all plate loadable. Okay, so you can put as much weight as you want in there, then you put the collars on and you can press away. What makes them unique, obviously, is the bell heads of the dumbbell. It's gonna be a lot larger than a typical dumbbell, uh, which just makes it harder to press, but it also looks cool. Um, that's why they probably did it at the circus, was just to just show a really immense uh, strength and a cool feat of strength. The other thing that makes this very unique compared to a normal dumbbell is going to be the handle diameter. So typically uh, they're gonna be anywhere from 1.5 to two inches, maybe sometimes bigger depending on uh, the make of the dumbbell, but that is going to make it a little bit harder as well. So not only do we have a very big dumbbell in general, we have a big handle that we have to deal with. So that's kind of what it is. Now we're gonna head on over and I'm gonna show you guys how to clean and press this bad boy. And then we'll move over to the mistakes and the gear. All right guys, the first thing we're gonna cover when it comes to the circus dumbbell is gonna be our stance width and grip. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna approach the circus dumbbell a little bit wider than hip width stance, okay? So I'm walking up to it. Generally, like I said, gonna be a little bit wider than hip width, okay? And then whatever my pressing hand is gonna be, I'm gonna put on first. So I press my right hand. So I'm gonna put my right hand on and then my opposite hand is gonna cup over top of that. Now, what we wanna make sure that we're doing is we're almost in a deadlift position or like a linebacker position and we're not squatting down, okay? So that's, that's a common mistake, but we wanna keep our hips a little bit higher here. So hand on, opposite hand over. From here, I'm gonna swing the dumbbell back, use my hips and get it up onto my shoulder in the rack position, okay? So we'll cover that one more time. So it's on the ground. I'm standing a little bit wider than hip width. I'm in a nice straight line. So if, this, if there was an invisible line running through the middle of my foot, it's gonna cut through the handle and then through the other uh, part of my other foot right down the middle. So right hand on, left hand over, big breath. Clean it right up. Now we're in the rack position, nice and secure. All right, so now that we talked about the clean, we're gonna go over to the press portion. Now, the first thing that we need to really get down is gonna be what I call a kick out. So that's actually when you clean the dumbbell to your shoulder, you're gonna take your opposite hand and you're gonna kick the dumbbell out so it puts it in a better position on your shoulder, just like I'm gonna show you right now. So we clean it up to here. From there, I take my opposite hand, put it on the head of the dumbbell, and I'm gonna push it away from me as I bring my elbow in, okay? so. Start here, push away, bring elbow in. That's gonna have a nice, comfortable resting position and it's gonna be way easier to press from. And it's not gonna slide off your back and it's not gonna dump the dumbbell anywhere. So that is something you wanna master. Okay, now that we have it in the rack position, we're gonna talk about the press. You could strict press it straight up, but I do not recommend that. The only two press variations I'd recommend with the circus dumbbell is gonna be a push press, okay, or my favorite, the push jerk. The difference between the push press and the push jerk is the double knee bend in the jerk, okay? And when you do the push press, your knees will lock out immediately as you start to push press the dumbbell. When we're going for the press, you can either look up at the sky or straight forward, whatever you're more comfortable with. But we wanna think about pushing the dumbbell over top of our head. So as I dip, I press, I'm thinking about pushing straight over top of my head. 
One other important note is gonna be to stack your hip. So we wanna make sure that we lean to the side in which we're pressing from. So that's gonna create a nice support base from the wrist to the shoulder into the hip. So I kinda like to lean into the side I'm pressing from as I dip, press over top, just like so. So you can see that my wrist is in line with my shoulder and elbow and down into my hip, keeping nice strong positioning. From there, the next tip I like to give people is as you dip, trying to keep upward force with your hand uh, so that it doesn't drop as you dip. So we wanna keep that uh, upward pressure with our hand as we dip. So you can see the dumbbell doesn't dip down my body versus if I dip and it caves, it becomes very hard to press from. So think about pushing up into the handle as you dip so you get a nice and secure press. So now that we covered the basics of the clean and press, we're just gonna go over some common mistakes that I see. And these are like the big ones that stand out. So the first one starts with the clean. Uh, obviously people not having proper footing or positioning. So like I said, we wanna make sure that we stand right over top of the dumbbell with a little bit wider than hip stance. Now, the second biggest mistake that I see on the clean is people try to clean it using their shoulder muscles only and not using their hips. So the difference is almost think about doing a kettlebell swing as you come up, squeeze your butt, and let that kettlebell kind of go right to your shoulder using the momentum of the hips being in play. So we don't wanna muscle it. We don't wanna just rely on our shoulders. It's very tough. When we're here, squeeze your butt, bring your hips forward like a kettlebell swing and into the rack position. Now, another common mistake I see from here is people letting the dumbbell slide off their back or having the dumbbell push forward like this. If you go to press, this dumbbell is gonna take control and turn you in, and it becomes almost impossible to get a press out of that. Likewise, if it's on your back and you go to press, it could slip off your back. It's just a very bad pressing angle. Flowing through these mistakes, the next biggest one that I see is when people press, they press out instead of over their head. So make sure you're pressing directly over your head and not out away from your body. All right, so now that we covered the clean and press and some common mistakes, I wanna go over the gear because the gear is very important when it comes to strongman and putting up as much weight over your head as possible. So starting from the ground up, I always love wearing Olympic weightlifting shoes. Gives a nice uh, base for support in any of the lifts. They're not gonna slip or slide. Uh, and I just love using Olympic lifting shoes when I press. Moving onward. Up the leg, we have knee sleeves. Now these are a little bit thinner knee sleeves. I like them because your legs aren't too involved with this movement. Uh, so I, I like to have good range of motion and be able to move a little bit more. So these are just, uh, I don't know, bear complex. I just found them off Amazon or somewhere. You can get the same things. They're just a light compression um, versus if you were squatting really heavy, you may want some more uh, compression and thicker knee sleeves. For this, I don't like that. Next. How can we forget a belt? If you don't have like eight belts on, you're not officially a strongman, uh, but we have the Reban soft belt, and then we have a Pioneer uh, belt that's just phenomenal. Highly recommend those. Uh, soft belt just keeps the back a little bit more warm. And then obviously this is the heavy duty leather belt, which just gives you a nice thing to brace against. Uh, from there, we have elbow sleeves. These are Cerberus elbow sleeves. They're gonna protect your elbows, keep your elbows warm, and it may also give you a little bit of a pop depending on the thickness of the sleeve for the press, which is just an added bonus. And lastly, the biggest little trick that I have here is our wrist wrap. So what we wanna do is we have our wrist wrap already on like so. Now this is the trick, and you guys are gonna thank me for this, and I got this uh, from Brian Alzer and Uncle Nick years ago. You take the other wrist wrap, you're gonna put it through your arm like this, and then you're just going to wrap it around to basically give yourself a Mega Man arm. And the reason this is nice is because when you clean and press the dumbbell, typically it kind of sits on your wrist and it can cause a little bit of pain. When you do this, you have a nice solid pad for the dumbbell to rest on, and it just takes away the fact that you don't have to think about it digging into your arm. And if you're trying to put a lot of weight overhead, you don't want to think about those variables. Uh, so doing this really helps just give the dumbbell uh, a nice base of support on your wrist, and it also doesn't dig into you, causing you a lot of pain and discomfort. So 
that's my little secret tip that you guys definitely should be using if you aren't already. Um, but that's pretty much it. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure that you hit up the comment section, give the video a like, subscribe to the channel. Your support means the absolute world to me. I'm gonna be putting out lots of strongman videos, uh, how to's on basically every implement and things that I think about as an athlete that are gonna make you more efficient and stronger when it comes to the sport. So thank you so much. Make sure you subscribe, stay a lean, mean, strength machine, and I'll catch up with you guys next time. Peace. Thank you.